Many have asked me whether Danny could have stayed with the Sea Lord of Bravos when she was young, and if the house with the red door was his residence. Regarding this, I did some additional research and present these enlightening passages. That was when they lived in Bravos, in the big house with the red door. Danny had her own room there, with a lemon tree outside her window. And by outside, she meant hundreds of meters away, behind glass, inside a geothermally heated greenhouse to protect it from freezing rain. We will have it all back someday, sweet sister, he would promise her. Sometimes his hands shook when he talked about it. The jewels and the silks, Dragonstone and King's Landing, the Iron Throne and the Seven Kingdoms, all they have taken from us, we will have it back. Viserys lived for that day. All that Danny wanted back was the big house with the red door, the lemon tree outside her window, the childhood she had never known, the sprawling palatial estate, the menagerie of exotic animals from around the world, the hundreds of servants, the privately owned war fleet, the geothermally heated greenhouse. That's all she wanted back. She did take a dozen flasks of scented oils, the perfumes of her childhood. She had only to close her eyes and sniff them, and she could see the big house at the red door once more. The smell of smoke and salt and fish, mussels, cockles, clams. She could smell home. She could see it there, just beyond that door, green fields and great stone houses and arms to keep her warm there. And canals, lots of canals, and a great iron bank, harbors teeming with fishermen and traders, and the enormous titan of Bravo screaming every hour on the hour. <laughs> Danny had only meant their rooms in Illyrio's estate, no true home surely, though all they had, but her brother did not want to hear that. There was no home there for him. Even the big house at the red door had not been home for him. Sirio Pharrell was always making Viserys chase cats. She remembered the Velociraptor dimly, the great terrible walking lizard, half blind, roaring and bellowing orders from his sickbed. The servants had lived in terror of him, but he'd always been kind to Danny. He called her little princess, and sometimes... <coughs> and his hands were soft as old leather, with sighs for claws. He never left his menagerie of exotic animals, though and the smell of sickness clung to him day and night. A hot, moist, sickly sweet odor, along with mussels and cockles and clams. Danny liked the strangeness of the Eastern Market, too, and its queer sights and sounds and smells. She often spent her mornings there, nibbling tree eggs, locust pie and green noodles, listening to the high ululating voices of the spell singers, gaping at manticores and silver cages, and immense gray elephants and the striped black and white horses of Jogus Nye though she wasn't sure why she was gaping as the house with the red door had a menagerie of exotic animals from around the world, including manticores. Is it Dario? What's happened? In her dream, they had been man and wife, simple folk who lived a simple life in a tall stone house with a red door, on a palatial estate with hundreds of servants, a private war fleet, a menagerie of exotic animals, and a geothermally heated greenhouse. Simple folk living a simple life. After Sir Willem had died, the servants had stolen what little money they had left. Lucky for them, Sirio Pharrell, the first sort of bravos, was in charge of security. He personally tracked down the culprits, captured them, and returned Danny and Viserys' finances to them. And then he continued his water dancing lessons with Viserys. There's no more wood. Darian had paid the innkeep double for a room with a hearth, but none of them had realized that wood would be so costly here. Trees did not grow on bravos save in the courts and gardens of the mighty. And thus, specifically, lemon trees can grow in bravos. That is certainly how logic works. After all, everyone has a geothermally heated greenhouse. My city, said Danny. I was looking for a house with a red door, but by night, all the doors are black. A red door? Miss Sandy was puzzled. What house is this? No house. In fact, more of a palace on a huge estate? Hundreds of servants, a war fleet, a menagerie of exotic animals, a geothermally heated greenhouse. That's what I was looking for, but by night, all the doors are black. Faster and faster the visions came, one after the other, until it seemed as if the very air had come alive. Shadows whirled and danced inside a tent, boneless and terrible. A little girl ran barefoot towards a big house with a red door, running from a velociraptor. <coughs>